Professor Adrian Saville and you're watching The Doctors on the Money. In this episode, we continue our journey through the Saville Six Pack, looking at the critical ingredients that correspond with countries that transform from poor to prosperous. And the second key ingredient is connectedness, our relationships with the rest of the world. In our research covering the 160 countries over 60 years, we identify these six common ingredients that correspond with countries that transform from poor to prosperous. Our argument, our complaint, is that these aren't miracles. In fact, economics is common sense. 95% of economics is common sense, to borrow from Harjun Chang. And these common sense ingredients include elevated savings and investment rates, demography, more people coming into the workforce than going into retirement, stable policies and capable institutions, education and healthcare, and then the sixth ingredient, connectedness, openness, or integration. Our relationship, a country's relationship with the rest of the world. The sixth ingredient uh, is responsible for about one third of the progress in countries' income per person. So if you put these first two ingredients together, a high investment and savings rate and connectedness with the rest of the world, there is an argument to be made that you've solved for almost all of country prosperity. When we talk about country connectedness, uh, just to emphasize that connectedness refers to your relationship with the rest of the world. The rest of the world might be as close as your next door neighbor. It might be a very distant trading partner. But what we are assessing is the extent to which your country has relationships with the rest of the world. And at the top of the pack, uh, the Netherlands, uh, Singapore, South Korea, in Latin America, Chile is the standout country. In North America, Canada is the standout country. In Central America, Costa Rica is the standout country. So the, these are the examples of countries that stand at the top of, uh, of the connectedness or integration pack. And if we go back over the experience of these so-called country miracles, and we speak about, for instance, the Asian miracles, Japan, Singapore, South Korea, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and more recently China, what all of them display is this attribute of having steadily, and in some cases quite quickly, climbed the ladder of international connectedness and integration. The, the standout countries at the top, uh, the Netherlands, Singapore, are probably self-evident because for all intents and purposes, they transit corridors. But there are countries that are not transit corridors that have steadily climbed the table, sometimes uh, in, in, in years, in other instances, decades. Examples from history, some great examples from history, uh, would include Japan coming from isolated, broken, bankrupt at the end of World War II with no uh, uh, export or, or international investment relationship with the rest of the world to speak of, to be uh, one of the largest vehicle manufacturers in the world, uh, Toyota. Um, China has recently climbed the tables very, very quickly. In the early 1990s, China's exports made up just 2% of world exports. Last year, China exports made up 20% of world exports. So that's a rapid climb in the space of 20, 30 years. And uh, there's probably something like a, a one in three chance that uh, if you're looking at this on a smartphone, uh, you're looking at it on Samsung. Um, and so South Korea is another example of one of these so-called Asian miracles. But the miracles of climbing uh, the connectedness ladder are not only Asian. We can find examples from Europe. Estonia is a great example where their connectedness with the world is really through technology. So Estonia is the originator of Skype code. If you game online, there's a one in three chance that you're gaming on Estonian uh, software code. Uh, and uh, Chile is a great example from Latin America where in the 1970s, Chile was an exporter of copper and today it is an exporter of financial services, Chardonnay, salmon, uh, and a very big importer of tourists. So that's their relationship with the rest of the world. At the bottom of the connectedness table, you have the likes of Venezuela, uh, which has plunged uh, in connectedness as Venezuela has gone under sanctions and lockdown, uh, political circumstances, Zimbabwe, uh, is towards the bottom of the table. Uh, their circumstances 
uh, have also come about from being a relatively well connected and relatively highly integrated economy to falling quickly down the table over the last 15 years. And then unsurprisingly, Cuba, North Korea uh, would sit all the way down the bottom of the table. And if they want to uh, move up the table, uh, you know, the next step is to work out the ways in which countries integrate and connect. The, the examples that we've given at the top and the bottom of the table are what we might call extremes or outliers. You know, you can think of the Netherlands and Singapore at the one extreme as uh, transit economies and uh, North Korea or Cuba at the bottom of the table as locked out economies. Uh, most of the world sits sort of in the rump uh, and this is where you find large parts of Eastern Europe, uh, you find uh, some parts of uh, Asia and South Africa uh, sits sort of in this fairly fat rump of being reasonably integrated uh, where it is a contributor but not a driver. Thinking of the ways in which countries might climb uh, or fall uh, down the table, it's helpful to assess how we measure connectedness and the framework to measure connectedness, TCIP trade, capital, information, and people. Those are the four things that can go across borders. Trade is the movement of goods and services. Capital is foreign investment, foreign loans, foreign aid. Uh, information is know-how, know-why, data, licenses, and people is all the way from tourists to immigrants. So if you measure those four ingredients, the flow of trade, capital, information, and people, you can assess a country's connectedness and you also get a sense of how they might be climbing or falling uh, through tables. In recent work, uh, I've authored the Visa Africa Integration Index, which measures how Pan-African economies are doing, uh, 20 Pan-African economies. There are some rapid and impressive gainers in West Africa, Ghana and Cote d'Ivoire. In East Africa, almost the entire East African cluster Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Uganda, Tanzania are all making steady advances. In Southern Africa, Zambia and Mauritius are making advances. Uh, so that gives a sense of a uh, continental context. There are some countries that are making their way down the table. The United States and the UK under Trump and Brexit are starting to make their way down a couple of places in the connectedness table. And that doesn't augur well. That represents a headwind to their progress and prosperity. Trumponomics and Brexit stand out as recent policy initiatives that take important ingredients of trade capital information and people lower down the connectedness ladder. And that'll take the United States and the United Kingdom backwards uh, in their international connectedness and integration, that represents a headwind to their prosperity and progress. In thinking about country progress and prosperity, getting from where you are to that miraculous place, the second critical ingredient in the Savile Six Pack is connectedness to the rest of the world. And connectedness is achieved through four columns or pillars, trade, capital, information, and people. And what you want to achieve is functional connectedness with the rest of the world. What we would call win-win economics, that by being in relationships with each other, we are each better off. And it should also uh, not be lost in making these observations about connectedness that the language of economics often emphasizes trade and capital as the big needle movers. But in our research, in our work, we find that it is actually the movement of people and information that are the needle movers. And the gorgeous element in this is that information and people are most easily moved and they are readily available early wins in building prosperity.